Hi everybody and welcome to this Halloween sculpt that I did. It's supposed to be a quick sculpt that I was doing for the Discord channel over on my Patreon page and the theme was just to include a pumpkin, so nothing too fancy. And I thought, yeah, why not build on top of a sculpt that I did on a stream, which was a goblin poking out of a pumpkin, but yeah, that didn't felt quite convincing when I uh, looked up that file again, so I started from scratch. And yeah, I wanted to keep the general direction, like a creature poking out of a pumpkin. This is why I just jumped into the project doing a pumpkin. I thought, why not go from there? And this is what I did. Uh, as you can see here, I, I used a lot of uh, radial symmetry, uh, which is like perfect for uh, an object like this because it saves quite a lot of time. Once I had established the pumpkin itself, I wanted to separate the lower part and the bottom part by just masking out the top part and then separating these two by making them an individual polygroup and then use the panel loops option to give it a thickness. And this way I was able to yeah, have like two hollow shells of the pumpkin that I could put the character into. And this was quite an enjoyable sculpt to do because right now I'm mostly sculpting on the anatomy study that I stream two times a week and this is going on for quite a while now, for a few months. So I think I have around 20 20 streams on that already, but it's coming along nicely and shouldn't take that long anymore until it's completely done. Yeah, the other project is, that I'm doing right now is a more realistic portrait that I want to do. I want to push the level of realism that I can achieve right now. All these projects are more long-term projects, so they take quite a lot of time. And this is why I really enjoyed doing this smaller sculpt here that you can see, because it's a nice change of pace right now, uh, doing something within a day with the concepting, then the texturing, sculpting of course, and then the rendering and an overpaint. I did uh, an overpaint in the end in Krita. It's similar to Photoshop, so yeah, I added a few more details on top of that after the fact. And having that at the end of the day uh, as a final image was really rewarding. So if you're currently in the mood of getting out of your daily routine or um, you're a bit tired of the projects that you're working on at the moment, maybe this is something for you as well. If you are inclined to do like a small Halloween sculpt, make sure to tag me on Instagram if this was the motivation for you to do one yourself. I would be really interested in seeing what you guys are up to. As you can see now, I added a sphere inside of the uh, pumpkin and before that I shaped the two different halves of the pumpkin into some kind of a mouth. This was the idea that I was going for. And now I want to have a face poking out of that mouth. And this is where I inserted the sphere and started sculpting. And it's basically just the pair of eyes that uh, will be seen in the end. So a lot of the head that you can see here won't be seen because it's covered by the rest of the pumpkin. And this gave me the freedom of yeah, just diving into things that I really enjoy. This is pure sculpting without having to worry about the rest of the head looking fine as well. I just had to focus on the eye area, which is kind of a comfort zone of mine, um, or it became over time. So this was quite quite fun to see come together. And yeah, I wanted to give it the impression that it's like squished into the lower half. And this is why I made sure that the skin is really filling all the gaps around the head. And I tried to give the impression that there is a bit of fat pads or like the cheek pushing from below. So yeah, just to give it the impression of like a mean evil creature that is always lurking for, I don't know, an opportunity to scare someone if they run by or try to look for treats, something like that. And yeah, so this is a, a fairly quick sculpt. It took like one and a half hours of sculpting and texturing and then the rendering, lighting, shading, everything took like, I think, the same time, one and a half hours as well. And then I did the overpaint in an hour, if I'm not mistaken. It was a lot of uh, trial and error, so I haven't done these smaller projects from start to finish within a few hours recently, so quite nice to to go through all the steps again, like the concept, then the details, then giving everything UVs, texture baking, and pushing it to the next level. 
and usually I would have stopped a bit earlier in the process and call it a day. Maybe come back to it later, but probably just leave it there. But this time I wanted to try out the detailing methods that I use on my anatomy study that I'm streaming um, to give a quick pass on the details on this model. And I think it turned out quite, quite good for the time. I used a lot of the noise functions, uh, which are really, really powerful, and used a combination of the morph target brush and the damp standard brush to enhance certain details and just see how I could break up this clean digital look by giving it some kind of a texture. For poly painting, I used the normal standard brush just with the Z add turned off and RGB for the color is turned on. And with this brush, I basically painted the entire model. And I used masks in conjunction with that. I really like to use the mask by Cavity. Um, and this gives a nice, nice texture to everything because I can enhance the details that I sculpted already. And this makes everything pop a little bit more. For masking with Cavity, I would say a small advice is to actually have clean date details in that case because the mask will be just enhancing everything that is sculpted. So if you have like unclean, I don't know, transitions from one alpha to the next alpha or from um, one texture to the other texture, then the mask by cavity will bring that out even more. So having like this general noise pattern with the surface noise gives a really good uh, start with that, I would say. So maybe give that a try if you're looking into ways to make it faster with the details. And yeah, try out the uh, morph target method. So what I like to do here is to store a morph target before I applied all the noise. And after I applied the noise, I dialed the overall strength in uh, to the level that I wanted. And then I made sure that I'm uh, not doing any proportional editing at the moment because this will affect the um, morph target. Um, and once I had the general intensity of the details for the surface noise in place, I selected the morph brush and by holding down Alt, I was able to enhance the details in areas that I wanted. So for example, along the edge of the cut between the two different halves, I tried to enhance the noise pattern to break up that edge and I think it gives a really good impression of detail and I sprinkled a few stronger noise patches around the model just to break up the, the clean surface and to give it a bit of variety and I did the same basically with the face as well and this is a really really cool technique I find because I can draw details and erase them without worrying about messing up the entire model because usually when I smooth out things or try to remove uh, certain details I have to sculpt that away manually and by that I most of the time mm, deform the form that I had um, laid in previously and by just manipulating the morph target it's like sculpting on a layer that I can erase and exaggerate. So this is really powerful and it's really helpful in other situations as well. So it might come in handy for you, maybe give it a try. Yeah, once I had everything in place, I again used the mask by cavity to help with the poly painting as well. And it's a fairly straightforward poly paint. So I tried to make it as straightforward as possible. And for the pumpkin, for example, I choose a base color, then um, I filled the entire object with that. And once that was in place, together with the more beige color for the inner part, I did the mask by cavity, and then I painted the areas that were normally visible with ambient occlusion, so everything that is inside the valleys and inside cuts and stuff like that in grooves, I painted them a little bit darker, a darker shade of orange and made it a bit more saturated to make it pop. Then I gave a few highlights on top of it. So this is the final result. It's a yeah, small little, small little sculpt and I kind of like it. It has, I don't know, it's a bit creepy, but also I find it a bit cute. I <laughs> don't know why, maybe because of the big eyes. But yeah, I hope you liked the video. 
and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.